kena ada 20 boyfriend in order to find that one perfect husband. The, the neurology, the psychology of this, childhood trauma ni macam satu seeding. Mm. It's yeah. like a seed. Commonly speaking, in Asian cultures, it has a lot where they have certain sets and rules for a woman to be behaving, for yes. a man to be behaving, mm. right? So we learned that since young. Yeah, I found out something really interesting that macam apa yang berlaku dalam in our family can be like a DNA imprintment. Kita parents tak learn to let go and move on and kita nak control sangat anak kita, um, you're still not going to get the child that you want. Realize that actually because I tak heal, I invited the same pattern. Exactly. Uh, so Some patients, mm. we even give them oxytocin because they are very moody and sad. Mm. We can give them in the form of wings. Hai semua, selamat datang ke Leseng Batu Medic Show. Bersama saya, Dr. Roland Victor. Hari ini, kita akan membincangkan satu topik yang hangat. Topik dia ialah lima kali kahwin, empat kali cerai. Healthy ke tak? Okay. Sebelum kita uh, memulakan uh, perbincangan ni bersama dua uh, tetamu jemputan saya, izinkan saya untuk memberitahu uh, tuan-tuan dan perempuan that this event is sponsored by uh, Symphony Nutraceuticals, uh, pengeluar Ecosenia, High Orec Value Antioxidant, anda boleh dapatkan uh, this kind of antioxidant dengan doktor berhampiran anda. So, uh, my guest today, tidak lain dan tidak bukan, mm-hmm. dua wanita yang jelita dan juga very, very powerful. Uh, bersama saya, Natasha Hudson. Uh, no one needs any more introduction about you. You are a, a very well-known celebrity dekat Malaysia. Thank you for coming to the show. Thank you so much for inviting me, doctor. Okay, and, <laughs> and uh, the next guest is uh, Mangala. Uh, Mangala merupakan seorang uh, ahli uh, fisiologi, uh, menjadi pengsyarah, berjaya membuat pelbagai jenis uh, literature dan kini telah beralih arus uh, dan menjadi seorang coach. Coach dari segi gaya hidup kesihatan, mental dan juga kesihatan seksual. Selamat datang ke Lesung Batu Medic Show. So, question to get the ball rolling. How do you do this? Lima kali kahwin dan empat kali cerai. How hmm. does this journey start? Can you share? Okay. Um, itulah. Mungkin persepsi masyarakat is like, you know, there's a lot of tomahan. Um, but they don't understand what really happened. So, orang kata, um, I started my whole journey at such a young age. How uh, young was that? I think dalam umur 23 years old. Because I had this mindset growing up that, um, you know, I came from a broken family. So, growing up, I was always, macam Tasha selalu mencari-mencari, um, Uh, an answer to macam mana nak mengisi ru- ruang hati ni hmm. because tidak ada unsur masculine ataupun contoh di dalam keluarga. Okay. So thinking that um, growing up as a mixed child, uh, half Melayu, half, half Mat Salih um, dan juga berbangsa Islam, uh, I have to do the right thing because I was surrounded by you know a family, a big family where tradition was strong and orang kata Mungkin mindset tu di mana like, you know, uh, get married early, have kids early, do it halal, you know, stuff like that. So, um, be a good wife, stay at home, uh, have kids. You no, know, I had that that mindset where, obviously, like, staying at home is not my thing lah because I was already working since I was really young. Tapi, I wanted to always try to do things right. Uh, macam okay. nak buat benda yang, macam kata, nak prove to myself I can do it better lah kan because I wanted macam orang kata get married early, have kids, big family untuk achievekan satu happiness yang mungkin Tasha tak dapat waktu uh, ibu bapa Tasha bersama. Okay. So that was the start uh, where my first marriage happened. Um, How young was it? 23. 23. Mm-hmm. Uh, not knowing that um, it was probably uh, one of the most traumatic that I had. Um, and then led on to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next. So it came in different series, different age, um, where there was a short marriage, there was a long marriage, there was like an in-between length. Um, but there was also a lot of hurt. So orang kata, uh, I was always wanting to have a protector in my life. Macam nak seorang untuk protect Tasha in my life kan. Macam uh, bukan pasal hal nak bers- tak nak bersendiri. Tapi um, tak nak jadi macam, oh kena ada 20 boyfriend in order to find that one perfect husband. Sebab kalau kita tengok, 
um, I mean, let's speak logic lah. There's a lot of people who have so many relationships and then uh, they still don't get married. Mm. Ataupun they have so many relationships, they get married pun sama juga. Ataupun too long a relationship and then too long of a marriage end up cerai juga because mm. they're fed up with each other. So I had to learn my own process. Tasha kena belajar proses Tasha sendiri lah. Macam mana nak faham myself and faham the person I was with, what I was, macam apa yang Tasha menjemput dalam hidup. Uh, orang kata, maybe I had a lot of Uh, not just maybe, eh, I realised um, words the couple of years ago, the past Tasha start Tasha punya psychotherapy treatment, that I had a lot of unhealed trauma daripada childhood sebenarnya, yang hmm. dia terbawa-bawa ke dalam Tasha punya adulthood. So, who would have thought, macam, how would I have known these things? Uh, so, I just had to go through it lah. So, so hmm. I, I think I want to jump jump yeah. kepada Manggala, uh, apa Tasha katakan tadi, hmm. childhood trauma. Right. Hmm. So, so, childhood trauma ni, Uh, boleh dikatakan uh, something that we don't look around. We yeah. don't look. We yeah. we anticipate childhood trauma or something that you just uh, brush your shoulders, just rub your knees yeah. and then bangun and bangkit and go on. Betul. But I think if you study the the, the neurology, the psychology of this, childhood trauma ni macam satu seeding. Mm. It's yeah. like a seed. Exactly. How, how do you all see this? I feel like uh, as she said about it, like it clearly shows that since childhood, uh, Pertama sekali, the place that we learn what is love mm. is actually from our primary care, which is our parent. Mm. If that place itself has been broken, we tend to think that maybe uh, she could have learned, maybe I'm making an assumption, could have learned whatever your mom has done for you guys is actually love, which mm. is being very, very responsible. Yeah. So we tend to look at the person in our life later on, looking at whoever being responsible could be love, which mm. maybe not because there could be lack of emotional connection. But uh, Right. And it's not enough actually. Yep. Yeah, it because be. um, it's not easy for a mother to carry the masculine figure juga. Yes. Um, because yes. I remember growing up, I had to be like the boy and the girl of the family. First first child with my mother. Uh, like my dad also had four different marriages. Hmm. Uh, my elder sister had two marriages. So now when I get closer to my father, because of course throughout the whole years we had a lot of uh, good and bad relationship. Hmm. You know, macam different religion, different mindset. Macam-macam benda. But when I learn to heal myself first, then it's easier for me to understand uh, the people closer to me. So, like, uh, when I learn so much now that when I try to uh, be like my father's therapist to understand him, what I wanted to know is betul. Maknanya, he had his own childhood trauma, trauma born from his parents that it went into his adulthood and dia tak heal sampai dia terbawa ke his own children. So, so like, it's like a replication, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. so it's, like, it's like, apa yang kita nampak here is uh, replikasi. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we we see that this is like a chess move, no? Yeah. And this, this, this is your yeah. quote. Okay, I will do this feeling. Yeah. This example, you, when you katakan that you were the eldest. Yeah. So, you technically would would want to play some form of that that dual role. Yeah. Masculine yeah. role yeah. because you wanted to to step up. Yeah. Because yeah. When, when you were separated, yeah. technically... Who was the one like technically wearing the pants? You had to yeah. do it like that. You had to step up for yeah. the. Yeah, I the had kids. to be the boy of the family exactly. as well, being exactly. the provider yeah. instead exactly. of being the receiver. Actually. So, 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 how how is this? Now we see how is this seem to be like passing from one generation to the next yeah. generation. It's it's more like most of the time the decision making skills that we all have mm. it tend to be um tend to be impacted by our subconscious mind. Yeah. Whatever we learn subconsciously instead of having a conscious ways of decision making mm-hmm. out of awareness but so something that we have been known for many years something that we have been learned for many years this is how my mother reacted this is how those aunties mm-hmm. reacted commonly speaking in asian cultures it has a lot where they have certain sets and rules for a woman to be behaving for yes. a man to be behaving mm-hmm. right so we learn that since young yeah. so feeling of guilt feeling of oh, shame yeah. Mm-hmm. feeling of uh, self-doubt is all yeah. being normalized. Yeah. And out of that, the decision that we are making is actually happening in our life. Sure. We are not coming from a feeling of love, which yeah. is having the higher uh, frequency of brain. So it's, totally is it, is it, are you saying that mm. that in this situation, Mm-mm. that means like love, care and everything doesn't come, it's just like by, by rule, like you know what, this is your role. You just do this role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That means like, okay, there is a vacuum. This spot is empty. I like a song in one jawatan. Yeah. If who wants to fill this post, fill out the post. And, and the first guy racing towards the post takes the post and then crest it. Yep, yeah. yep. And, and I found out something really interesting that macam 
apa yang berlaku dalam in our family can be like a DNA imprintment. So mm. apa yang ada dalam DNA kita kalau keturunan tu tak heal, wow. dia boleh pass oh. on to the next generation. And Walkable. I am so not surprised because my grandfather and my grandma, my my grandparents on my Australian side were the same. Also had many marriages. And then it went to my dad and it went to me. So it's like macam, I used to think it was a curse. Tapi oh. sebenarnya tak. Mungkin during the, 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 the trauma was never healed. So it just went on and on and on. But like for me, what I can do now that I'm conscious uh, in this whole situation, of course, like when I had my own children, I promised myself, I told myself that I do not want to, like especially when you become a parent, you do not want to become like uh, something you didn't like in your parent. Faham tak macam in terms of communication and attitude because I feel that when you build trauma in your kids um, because love is supposed to be given from a parent to a child again, they will actually after that go through the same thing like you you know what I mean so there has to be balance and it's really important that two people when they are together and not together they got to really work on not having the same effect on your kids to have uh, have to grow up with trauma born and Uh, one thing craving for love because I see it in my kids. I also had a divorce. So when I have kids, I had to work on it, like uh, attend to their emotions and like, make sure that they go through therapy juga like me because it's uh, it's something that I need to fix now before it gets worse because even though you think, oh, tak apalah, dia kecil lagi, nanti bila besar, pandai-pandai lah, the, the problem will solve. I, 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 want, I want to in, <laughs> yeah. interrupt a bit. Yeah. When when you see the kids, uh, I mean, you you had that that amount of process of relationships yeah, yeah. and then i mean are you saying that no they cannot ex- uh, face this. that or yeah. is that we're going to put a blockade no you're yeah. going to stop at one you're going to stop at preventing uh, like introducing I, I, uh. i want to try to prevent them going through the same emotional um much like i don't want to i don't i don't want them to go through that breakdown like me meaning i want them to know that both parents are are there for them but if one parent is not doing the same then It's okay. I try to want to help them survive that journey at least through whatever that I can do for them now. Because I'm not saying that it's perfect. Like, for example, my my second husband uh, and me, we're in such a good relationship. We're like best friends. We're like family. I look at it as maybe we're not meant to get, be together, but uh, we are meant to actually develop this beautiful number one child in our life to become the best of what we want her to be. Okay. And because of that, my elder daughter, she's only 15, dia macam sangat matang. And she can talk to me. We can talk to each other like uh, best friends. And I don't, not to say I don't act like her mom, but she can open up everything and ask me everything. And I will not discriminate her. I don't want to pressure her. I don't want to control her life. Meaning, I also have to learn to let go. It's like this. If we don't learn to let go and move on and we want to control our children, you're still not going to get the child that you want. Your child will still retaliate. So even my daughter, she's only 15, she says, She's really telling me now, like, mm, I don't know if I want to get married uh, because I'm kind of scared if I have to go through like you, like in terms of, you know, the kids and stuff. Like, I want to, I want to be a successfully, like, she knows what she wants. I want to work first. Like, I don't want, she's telling me stuff that like, wow, 15 year old and you macam bagi tau, you're telling me everything like this now. So I cannot macam say, no, you cannot, you must get married. No, for, you macam benda-benda macam tu. Tak boleh, I cannot force my daughter to get married because I want her to get married. Kalau she choose that she tak nak and I will not get a grandchild from her, I, I cannot force my daughter. <laughs> kan? that, that's that's great perspective. Yeah, so, but macam we have to look, macam kita kena tengok di luar kotak. Lor. Kita tak boleh jangan extreme sangat when it comes to culture and religion with the child because you will only just make them orang kata, more tight. More, tak boleh nak communicate lah. Dia akan macam simpan lagi banyak rahsia. Dia akan pendam, dia akan luah kepada orang lain. Dia akan do things yang kita tak nak. Macam, I mean, you're speaking from experience. Like, it was, really hard for me to grow up being having a communication even with my mom i mean she was a great uh, i mean she did great things for us and stuff like kita akan cari tempat lain pula like macam i would go to other people's mother pula like you are my godmother i thought to you i'm more comfortable with you benda macam tu kan so makanya when kita buat decisions in life pun kita kena fikir sendiri so a lot of my failed marriages is based on me trying to run away from certain things i never got from family members like macam atau pura rasa pressure atau rasa macam itulah solusi dia cari happiness dalam uh, relationship ni dan mungkin dia boleh memberikan kita that happiness tapi not realizing that it was too fast too quick um i was actually hurting myself uh, do you feel that 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 going going into the relationships very fast hmm. uh, 
it's because of that that push factor that comes out from the family or there is a vacuum a pull uh, because you might have an affinity of attraction yeah. to a certain set of male uh, exactly like, like who i mean i wouldn't want to use i do, i don't know what word to use yeah. mm. uh i don't think it's predictive mm. but uh, in terms of there will be a selective criteria okay if this kind of guy comes in okay he fits that, mm. that sometimes that kita tak akan tahu tau mm. tapi kita uh, like for me now i realize that actually because i tak heal i invited the same pattern exactly ah uh, so yep. i totally look at it wow like i'm looking at a canvas right now i can write it all down like what happened 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 why i did certain things can my my bad choices or selections or mistake because i'm not saying i'm perfect too kan kita as a a, a human being kita grow up uh, we don't know how to regulate kita punya emotions ha uh-uh. huh. How, but how how mangala had macam mana how does this happen when when you feel that okay uh, person one didn't fit we they had a separation whether mm. whether they were dating or in marriage and everything mm. then they go back again and okay. this is something that we can see right. not just right. bukan hanya dari segi in your segment of coaching i mean even mm. dalam patients who come to the clinic mm. sometimes crisis that they have mm. is A emotional crisis yeah. that cascade kepada all their 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 illness. Yeah. Right. Why do they go back again, thirsty for the same pattern, the same set of uh, <laughs> same bad boy? <laughs> There is like two possibilities here, right? Two scenarios here. Okay. All right. Our brain is mm-hmm. configured in a way where uh, we are so connected, attached to something which is very familiar. Yeah, but for example, you're going to a new place, you find a new person there, and then mm-hmm. this person is sharing to you about the vacation that you went last year mm-hmm. to the same place, and then you guys like you can you connect you to click. them, yeah. uh, click because of that exactly same experience, right? Yeah. Similarly, whatever. How many feeling, functions you visited like that? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Trust me, I don't. <laughs> don't don't put that cut on me anymore now. <laughs> Doesn't <a> work. <laughs> Which means like multiple times, uh, subconscious mind is nothing but our body yeah. as well, right? So whatever emotion has been released in our body in the name of love, for yeah. example, deep inside it could be guilt, yeah. deep inside it could be shame. Yeah. But unfortunately, when you feel the similar emotion with that person, you very fast go and attach yourself mm-hmm. to that person. So it will happen like unknown. That's like a yeah, so called yeah. um, appetizer love language. Tapi sebenarnya bukan love language pun. Mm. Mm-hmm. Tapi love language ni pun macam very interesting to mm-hmm. be uh, to play a part in in orang kata um, attraction between two people kan. Because right. I guess my love language then when I was young was I wanted uh, to hear like uh, words or you know touch um, certain things that I didn't get from my father. Okay. Because, comforting ones. Yeah, the comforting ones. Because I, whenever I went back to Australia to meet my dad, it was so nice to hug him and smell him. Like, that. there's that smell that I miss about mm. my father that I wish I can find again. So, again, like I said, my chum, who would have thought that actually it was because I was unhealed? It's not so much, a, it's not even yeah. about the person, the, the person to replace. It was, my heart wasn't healed to be able to move on to the next That's why I thought, oh, okay, tak apa. This is the way. But this is not the way. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. The the second scenario is could be happening as well, which yeah. is like making another decision, which is extreme one. The yeah, balance is actually in the middle. Okay. It's like either I do this or I totally am not going to do this anymore. I'm yeah. not going to choose this kind of person. I'm going to go into something very extreme, opposite way. Yeah. The opposite ways of making decisions is actually something that we are pushing far from our true desire because our desire is somewhere in between which yeah, is like yeah. i want a comforting man but i'm also not searching a dad i'm yeah. searching a partner yeah, mm. instead yeah. we go into a person who is emotionally unavailable completely yeah. but oh my god oh my god <laughs> but you see, you see she, oh she, 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 mentioned, she mentioned something like you know uh, like, yes. like going into the relationship that always trying to find someone who can mimic that that yeah. Right. In right. The, in the, right. But at the end of the day, it's like me. I'm the man. You know. It, yeah. Jadi yeah. terbalik so, so, tau so, 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 mm. so would you say, say like growing up, yeah. you are in a in a, in a situation that you know what you had to man up yeah. as the eldest daughter the in the house. Uh, so yeah. and then yeah. and then you go into relationship. There is now a masculinity challenge. Would you see that? Mm, betul. Um. You know, one of the things I remember that 
uh, when I was in these relationships, there was one common thing. Mm. First, of course, uh, uh, pada mulanya semuanya indah. Okay, <laughs> I mean, sorry to say that. Tapi, yeah, that happened. Yeah, of course, semuanya indah. Memanglah baru, kan? Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that along the way tak indah, indah. Cuma, when kita dalam satu comfort zone, kan? Kita jadi macam kita lupa that um, your love language towards your partner is important. Contoh, I always end up going to everywhere alone. Hmm. Weddings alone, events alone. It was a big problem to me because I'm like, maybe I should just put a signboard here. My husband is not with me at this moment. Ataupun I am alone. Macam jadi fed up. So I felt like, oh, this is, what is this? You know, benda macam tu. I start questioning, what am I? What is my existence? Am I um, dreaming of all these things that I want? Expectation, tapi I'm not getting it. Is it even a relationship? Uh, benda macam tu. So that is the start of the conflict lah. Where I felt alone pula. I felt lonely in the relationship. Okay. Uh, and then it's not nice when you start confining to your family or friends about these matters because then you know trouble is coming. Uh, so, macam you feel that you're not being hurt pula because you've been one that, wanting that kan, all yes. your life. Yes. Uh, yeah. uh, you're not getting it from your dad. What more, even though you grew up with your mom, you're not getting it from your mom because it was it was hard for me because I had a very overprotective mother. Mm-hmm. You know? So I would say she had no choice. Uh, I don't even know how to start. <laughs> but the thing is, it's up to today. So my like, okay. kata like, um, I love my mom. She does wonderful things. But like, my child like said, maybe she also has her own traumas or her own experience that she brought it into my life, which is not healthy. So that's why I memang tak nak like, apply those things to my children, because then they will grow up just going like, oh, psycho, or psychotic, and just cannot, you know. But Honestly, if anyone was in my position, if that's strong, boleh dah bunuh diri lama. Uh, that's that's my real huge, like the huge experience I went through was like a time bomb. I, I, yeah. I, I want to ask Mangala, right. you know, you know, Natasha mentioned that you go to function mm. and then and then you are technically married and yeah. then and then like your partner don't show up. Yeah. Or even there's one thing show up, there's another one thing live up to the event. Betul. Mm. Uh, I I feel that there has to be a common ground. There, was, there has mm. to be a give and take. For example, yeah, like yeah. When, when you are in a relationship like that, yeah. like, even though you don't want to see some relatives, mm-hmm. you terpaksa turun juga. Mm-hmm. It's like you cannot like back up, back mm-hmm. down, or maybe yeah. even in her scenario, at the peak of uh, the celebrity lifestyle, yeah. maybe mm-hmm. there's so much of media attention, so yeah. much of public, and then you choose to marry someone of that status. Yeah. Right. And And at that point, You don't show up, yeah, and and then you leave this individual like you know what, just hanging there. Go like yourself, yeah, and 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 that proves the wrong. But but for me, I simply feel that you know that's sort of like a universal protocol. This is the part of the game. Mm-hmm. But why you choose to slack, and then you start to slack, and then it bruises and bruises and bruises because you're going you're going to get the partner coming back all sloppy. It's not. Yeah. I had to answer hundred people that you were not here, yeah, and then they will last for a week. Yeah. The week will. Translate to another few months, and yep. and and, and 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 the and the tag it, which which create a very big gap among yeah. the couple yeah. because the gap is more like one, uh, the desire is not being fulfilled because mm-hmm. one person always wanted the other one to be yeah. together. Or else, why do we even be in a relationship? Yeah. We don't want to be together, yeah. right? And the other side, the person feel like, uh, okay, she left me alone and she doesn't even want to uh, share about it to yeah. me because we didn't have good thing to share. We yeah. wasn't facing a good time that time. So it creates a conversational gap. It creates an emotional gap as well. And these emotions, if it is unspoken, used to be storing in our body. Yeah. That's like another big thing where study shows that emotions yeah. stores in our body as as fats most of the time. And it hurts like, us too. Uh, yep. It's not hurting your heart. You emotional abuse, I would call it. It's like abuse, but <laughs> emotional. Mm-hmm. Basically, would uh, start creating sickness within your own self. Yep. Mm-hmm. You fall sick. You feel unwell. Yep. You have anxiety. So bila orang cakap pasal anxiety semua macam I like, what's your problem? Ah, yeah, like, exactly. macam I exactly. rasa I'm exactly. the therapist <laughs> sekarang. They got the magic wand. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> tapi kan, the interesting thing kan, I can tell you okay about my fifth marriage right now kan. I feel like I'm totally stable. Okay. Meaning, I have no problem if my husband doesn't want to go anywhere with me. Like contohnya, he's in Langkawi right now. Hmm. I'm in KL for two weeks with my kids. And he knows why I'm here. And I feel in my time with my kids doing my work and all that. And he's busy there working. If it was me before, I'd be like, kenapa tak nak ikut I? Kena lah ikut I. Takkan I nak pergi seorang? You know, I would feel like that macam, I don't want to be alone. I shouldn't be alone. I'm a woman. Uh, stuff like that. Because I was not emotionally settled then, 
with such an uh, macam kata unstable there's no trust uh, or i cannot trust the person or there's so much trauma in the previous that there's a lot of lies involved i was so unsettled macam mm. my anxiety built up was to the point yang macam tak makan mm. nak ni macam orang tengok i pun tahu i macam eh what's wrong with me like what which jungle did she just come up from mm-hmm. you know mm. tapi now uh dim sini when you heal when you start to heal there is a better understanding ah uh, maknya macam but the great thing about this current relationship is we are we are so bukan nak cakap perfectly compatible tapi at least kan kita understand each other's emotions kita do the same thing we like the same thing it's important actually orang kata um penting ke um kita kena dengan orang yang minat apa yang kita buat macam kena ke paksa orang tu minat apa yang kita buat to me it's not atas paksaan you be lucky if you have somebody yang not pay interest to what you do maknanya hmm. dia betul into you macam like dia not support at least give you the support in what you do and push you and drive you that is that is what i think every human being needs lah sebenarnya in in a perfect relationship it's not even about berkepit 24 jam pun um tapi kalau macam saya cakaplah bila uh, kita unheal kita expect that that we want the protection but now when you are for me like is when i'm healed i feel like i know what he's doing he knows what i'm doing uh, macam we have a common ground together it's yeah. so easy now to move about like i have no hard feelings if he doesn't want to follow me kan uh, so macam orang kata ada nanti we happy we go back you know it's, it's nice to have that gap sometimes kalau tak zaman budu nak masa muda nak melekat je kan macam <laughs> nak rasa macam Oh yeah, to be seen together now, which I'm, it's okay, it's fine, you know. Understand, yeah. Understand. And 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 what you mentioned, I think I see it from a medical perspective. Ah, mm. the fight and flight response. Yeah. Is something that ramai orang they they don't know mm. that kebiasaan you akan pergi jumpa doktor mm-hmm. and you just want us to do a blood test. Mm. Yeah. And then from the blood test we find something. But mm. actually, when 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 a person like me who study like 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 neuroendocrinology mm, right. and all the the psychological endo endo stuff, cortisol is one of the hormones where you mention like you know what when I go into an event like that, I'm like flashlights on everybody's looking at me you the new couple when you're going to get married when you're going yeah. to get pregnant yeah. kind of all yeah. kind of stuff and then like oh he's not here why he went where overseas yeah, or something like so 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 that 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 question is like almost like put you into this more high level of cortisol stressful yeah right yeah and then another hormone kicks in the thyroid gets mm. screwed because oh. the more you talk the more you're going to spill The more you talk, the more you're going to spill information. Because yeah. females are much more emotional then, among them than men. Men can yeah. just like zip and say, no, everything's fine. Everything's yeah. wrong like that. True. They're going to true. say that until even they go to the Sharia court, they're going to say, that, oh, everything is fine. Worst <laughs> <Okay. laughs> case scenario. No, it is, it is, it is a I fact. This is how But, uh, males operate. Okay. And, and, and so, so Sometimes actually males sebenarnya tak tahu nak regulate emotions. They, they pent up the emotions. Oh, they macam simpan kan? Yeah. Which is, to me... Um, I don't want to be one-sided, you know. I don't want to be. It's all about women because right. I try to really understand men as well. Like, right. kita kena membantu sebenarnya yes. lelaki untuk regulate even our partners. Kalau exactly. tak, nanti it's dangerous. Yes, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. true. It's true. It's so important. and and that that danger sometimes also involve and exceed to like promiscuity, another affair, yep. and everything because yeah. the outlet they feel like. Every time they get no sex drive endless. and yeah, all this everything, stuff. Everything, everything, yeah. it all, it all pivot because the 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 thyroid is going to shut down in among on, on the female side. Cortisol is going to go up. They're going to be very silent. Mm. The guys going to like uh oh, try try and approach back, But punching yeah. back. Cannot get, cannot get, cannot get. And then one point, say, you know what? I'm not going to be here. Yeah. Oxytocin pun die. Of course, yeah. oxytocin, oxytocin, quantum mm. and purple is one of the the love hormone. And trust hormone as well. Yes, yeah. ah, itu yeah. salah satu hormon yang biasanya akan keluar masa uh, penyusuan. Tetapi mm-hmm. the lucky pun have this hormon, and female also have this hormon. Okay. Some patients mm-hmm. we even give them oxytocin because they are very moody and sad. Mm-hmm. We can give them in the form of cream. <laughs> And adding on, uh, oxytocin also largely uh, influenced st- uh, since the beginning of parenting mm-hmm. from the primary care itself. Mm. So, what is believed as trust hormone, what is believed as love, 
how do you believe uh, you are being protected is actually starts from there itself yeah. primary care itself mm-hmm. so when that moment itself they don't feel protected or trust trustworthy being there then it carries away all the line into their adulthood into mm. their relationship yeah. and they find it very hard to have oxytocin naturally in their body because they can't trust this person go intimate with this person and yeah. that will take them back actually to be going deeply in the But, relationship uh, talk, talking about uh, traumas some people i think majority of population will they already finish one relationship they might take a break and then maybe go into another relationship maybe in a short period or mm-hmm. long period Uh, or some don't even want to do it or maybe they try the second one and they feel even through just a courting phase the dating phase you know what I don't want this anymore mm. I think I, I, I'm, I'm going to like like put myself in so much yeah. that's more the, the risk is way higher yeah. in a female than a, than, 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 a, than mm. a male no mm. doubt about that mm. uh, but in certain, certain situations that there is also that thirst of affection love yeah. everything which is good yep. because there would be sometimes maybe some form of regret right that that mm-hmm. sometimes we just say a very young individual let's just say when you were 23 first relationship three years down the line first and I had one child separated mm-hmm. you were only like 27 at that point i mean mm-hmm. you are still uh, had all the criteria of youth and fertility at that point so you might have the possibility of finding another partner mm-hmm. but they go into that trauma of like oh no mm-hmm. I don't know but, but then but this, then yeah. but then later mm-hmm. along the years when they go into the yeah, the late 30s 40s we oh why I didn't I didn't get yeah. to do it so yeah. does that does that mm-hmm. happen and and what why does that also happen there is like again two possibilities right the fight and flight reaction mm-hmm. as we said like it can be happening in two seconds two minute or two years in our life so the person who is like wanting to go and try out wanting to go and confront in their life is more like a person who go into fight mode so much mm. and they get to express themselves they get to confront this person share it exactly what they felt and they would be ready to go into another relationship and try it out change themselves mm. fix themselves but on the other other side the person who has flight mode so much they try to feel panicking they're trying to take themselves back that yeah. is the person who feels like okay it's done i'm not going to go into it anymore yeah. and that clearly shows in their physique as well not to uh, to be offensive or harm anybody but the person who uh, feel uh, having having a decision making like i'm not going to do this anymore i'm going to take myself back mm-hmm. isolation their physical body changes so much like how they will put on weight to be honest and they will start to not liking their body okay. creating another gap that they won't be liking to even see yourself in the mirror mm. another gap where they don't want to show that to a man mm. they don't want to put themselves mm. out to be in a relationship yeah. an- a bigger gap is like one to another one to another which led them to be isolating completely yeah. not getting into a relationship but on the other side those not really storing everything in them they go into fight mode they say it out they express like how it has been yeah. carried all this way. like hyper independent uh, having so much of masculinity they won't be storing everything inside but that but they do tend to make some decision which is not really helping them they get but into the relationship but they'll be like keep fighting yeah. on that so that it's sometimes it does helpful because they go and try at least they go yeah. into it yeah. they they're being true to their yeah. desire which is like i want to connect to a man yeah. i feel like yes i do have love to express i want to feel it i want to go into it probably that yeah. would be very much helpful but this side of it which is like isolation keeping it all in not making decisions is not really helpful yeah. something dangerous to, to Actually, be really look speaking about on. the isolation part i mean mm. it's very familiar to me not to me um mm. but to somebody in my life which uh, she had they had a dual type of um experience with <coughs> the mm. muda and then in the end give up because of the heartbreak was so bad but <coughs> okay the the downside of this heartbreak is the development of the person's mental state and character became very negative maknanya <laughs> negative in everything in everything related into her life meaning bukan pasal relationship relationship memang number one <coughs> like <coughs> all men tak nak lagi <coughs> tak nak pengalaman uh, ataupun dia ada dia punya criteria stereotype uh, dia ada satu criteria yang dia nak yang i tahu so bila i want to contoh let's say bagi introduce to a person yang macam mungkin can be better uh, it's hard even though the person to us is good for 
for dia tak they still not go drawn to the same criteria even though that criteria will break dia punya heart kan um, and uh, another thing is like every day they start dia punya life it starts with negativity which is like for kita yang kenal it's very like oh like you don't want to be around the person even when you become a friend pun you don't want to be around because of dia punya pengalaman dia bring it into everything and every single part of life maknanya macam dia constantly nak invite bad energy uh, which is quite quite scary quite traumatizing it is it is it is it's yeah it's but yeah. but uh, If you see today's scenario, I mean, uh, the generation today, mm-hmm. especially I would say females, is very mm-hmm. different. Yeah. Thanks to social media, <laughs> the access to 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 opportunity mm-hmm. in relationship is way higher than male. Mm-hmm. Extremely high. It's like almost like like uh, 80% percent of women, only one twenty percent of the men. Mm. And the opposite is like it's like twenty percent of the of uh, men cannot get that eighty percent of. <laughs> sure, women. Not, cannot get. They cannot get. They cannot get. They cannot get. They cannot get because because. Uh, But yeah, I the guess DMs, so. the context, the way the way the way people approach dating, courting, and everything is yeah, very yeah, different yeah, today yeah. compared yeah. To, to 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 that time. Those days, right? right. Yeah, right. At that time, you have to do a a face to face date. Yeah, stand yeah. at the bus stop and wait. Somehow <laughs> that yes. happened to be very healthy once. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, actually, traditional yeah. ways and values in the past or much like because it's so how connective. How it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Connective and and today and today, when when we see the 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 younger generation today, they have so many applications and app chatting, Zoom call, all of this. Wow. So so the physicality is already they have Bigger already gap. forgone it. It's okay lah. We don't have the physical. And, and that even create a very low self esteem in men and women. Uh-huh. Mostly in men approaching this kind of women because um, there is a tendency these days looking at uh, the social media and everything. The availability or the accessibility for women and men is very high. It's mm. like we can just swipe and swipe and swipe, mm. looking at so many options. You until you get so tired of yeah. it, but. They are not really being so confident enough to be like going and approaching person Listen. in person and getting into a, a a deeper level of intimate relationship because they do have uh, these feelings that these uh, for for a man there are multiple um, how do options. I say options are there and at the same time they do feel like this woman could be not really accessible for me mm. to mm-hmm. go and do it right pursue yeah pursue yeah yeah, yeah. is so it connection it, or temptation ha that's the way. Temp- there could be temptation, okay. but they can't develop a connection. Yeah, that's why it's not connection anymore. It's yeah. temptation and Mm-mm. eagerness. Kind okay, of mm-hmm. that's why. I look it's but, uh, yeah. I think I, I agree. I, I agree. I agree with yeah. you because the, the the way the way the algorithms are designed, yeah. they will drive you that traffic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they will drive you that traffic. They yeah. will give you the attention because yeah. that's how they create yeah. their yeah. their money on, on 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 the on on the first on 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 the content itself. Yeah. So, yeah. So. That 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 leads to to the to the younger generation to feel like look, if I were to go into a relationship, uh, they have to think about bravery the first thing. Yeah, that's yes. so true. It's 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 two two parties willing to be brave enough, not yeah. just someone just brave enough to put a post. Yeah, and, yeah. And then hope everything yeah. magical to to, to happen. Yeah, I totally to agree. To happen, and uh, there's something very interesting that that Bila you left KL in 2021 to mm-hmm. to Langkawi. Uh, Did you see that as a escape book? No. Sebenarnya <laughs> <laughs> in my in my um uh that marriage I actually already wanted to migrate. Meaning I was happy that there were times me and my ex balik kampung, balik Ipoh. He's from Ipoh. I was also got relatives there. So I found that being in the city dengan macam my kids and working hard, there were moments I felt like I wanted serenity. Hmm. And um so Uh, there were disagreements, meaning like uh, I wanted, he didn't want. Uh, but I understood because maybe my calling was different. His calling was more like he was probably worried about my chum. I uh, could, uh, what about jobs and stuff? So you know you can't force. Um, but then in my heart was like I was ready to leave the city already. Like my chum, um, I wouldn't want to call it like this is already my retirement. But no, I believe that because um, I had some friends around me and my chum, they were already like. Doing a lot of migration all the time and having grounded kids was different, meaning they either was homeschooling. I just wanted to experience different things in life for having a healthier family. 
So later on, you know, um, I was on my own and all that. And then my my career path changed, meaning from just becoming an entertainment entertainer, I, I got into sports and I was um, back into the equine industry. I was getting closer to the horses every day, doing archery. And I felt that I was I was at the farm every day. I was outside. I was in Rimba. I was actually deciding that in 2021 was... 2022's plan maybe lah okay, I check up I'm gonna you know my rental is finished I wanna move meaning mm. I don't wanna be in KL like slogging myself um, thinking that it's gonna make me happy but it's not I just wanted to to feel that life is not just about living in the city it's not just there forever same circle same pattern uh, same stress I felt that if people can migrate to London Australia US like oh I'm living in America right now why can't I say I moved to Langkawi? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I got close to my my current husband um, and I decided to open an archery business in Langkawi, uh, my eyes opened up that, hey, this used to be a place where my mom used to live as well. Hmm. So I thought, maybe I should, you know, I think people need knowledge here. Like archery, when, when I brought archery there, everybody was like, wow, like eager and it was something new for them. And... I was going back and forth, up and down, up and down until things got really serious. And I, and then, because he's lived there for 10 years. And it's not that he forced me to follow him there, but I found that, okay, I'm not moving to Rambau now because I'm not alone. So <laughs> he's living there. So why not I try to um, move my whole life to Langkawi and start fresh and and enjoy the kampung life, mm. you know, because that's what I wanted. Living in Rambau with horses would have been the same thing. Uh, living in Langkawi would have been the same thing. It's just that you probably had access to more things. But I felt that I was already, I couldn't handle the fact of being stressed, no more oxytocin in my brain. Like it was just stress, you know, like how do I become a happier person and I'm alone most of the time. Um, I should have a new uh, life, new environment. Uh, I was ready to, to tone down everything in my life, like have less, you know, like, I'm okay living less. I don't need to have Jaya grocer and whatever. It's fine. Mm. I can still live. You know, I'm happy that now I'm plucking uh, vegetables from my the landlord's world. house. Mm. Uh, you know, so much. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing. And I think much. Um, um, why I find it um interesting, like in a relationship, me is because my husband, he has all these other skills that I feel that I like, but I never got. Or he is a person that is so easy. Like he learns what I do, I learn what he does. Much. Like, I taught him archery. He's one of my best. You know, like. To Jay's, you know, and he's aiming, like, yeah, he can like he does all these stunts and stuff that I don't do. Wow. So much, I feel that yes, because we we can share the same interests. That the atas pasaan, um, I felt like throwing the surfboard a million times out of frustration, couldn't do what I wanted, you know. Mm. So it's balance. Uh, in the end, much, um, he taught me something good. I taught him something good, and uh, Langkawi is really calm for me. Like I feel like I can always fly back to KL. Like of course, memang ada banyak sangat orang nak cakap that. Uh, aren't you like they always ask me the same question what about your kids what about your kids I mean to me I think it's a very personal question you know um, why they're here why I'm there uh, what is it in the in the past and stuff I think I have this concept in my life that you see um, being married or having children or even family in your life is you do not own anyone hmm. so if I don't have that concept in Malay we call it red door or like my chum if I don't have this concept of uh, um believing that I have to learn to let go um, and settle with it, I think my life will not be settled. Mm. Because we don't own anyone. Uh, I can What I can do is I can give them the best of love to my kids and always be a mo- better mother. Um, of course, we all have our weaknesses until we try to be the best. That's the most I can do for my kids as long as I'm living. Mm. Um, and, and sacrifice. You know, a woman is crazy. We just have this power that even men says we're crazy. You know what I mean? So... I have this strength where I feel that I will do anything in my energy to give to my kids, even if it's about, you know, digging the sand to find a dollar. You get what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah, that's 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 it. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, <laughs> that's beautifully said. The relationship between you and yeah. the partner. Because, because I, I, I see uh, a lot of people feel that structure of family and mm. relationship is always set with the common yeah. percentage. Yeah. I mean, so, oh, if you have a relationship, if you are separated, then somebody has to fight for the custody yeah. mm. and that brings you another four, five years of trauma there yeah. and and both of them are in a tug of war yeah. and then somebody wins or mm. you get joint custody, yeah. etc. Mm. And then what happens? 
Uh, you have to see your your children all yeah. the time, kind of thing. But yeah. so, sometimes maybe you're blessed. You have bigger kid. Yeah. Uh, some some of them maybe have very really really young, really young ones. ones. Mm-hmm. They really need a lot of uh, uh, babysitting and and stuff yeah. like that. So so I I think I think it's very subjective. We cannot. I think the biggest failure I think is not allowing people to try. Yeah. Because what, whatever 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 form of relationship or journey that they go through, it is their journey. Not just yeah. try. And it's not leave. and it's not for us to stand by there and comment like yeah. oh no what they should have done this. Yeah, criticize, yeah. comment, yeah. And passing judgments. You need yeah. to let people breathe. They can open a fast. You know you you can't suffocate a person. Yeah. Not even a parent can do that as well. So that's what I learned about becoming a parent. So I should. There will be a time when two more years my daughter will leave me. Mm. Right, and I'm here like, you want me to go with you? Do you want me to take care of you in Australia? Do you, you know, like, of course I want. Of course she wants my present. But the thing is, I got to learn to let go. Same in relationship. Um, like I said, why is it now I'm more stable in terms of understanding, like, um, not having my husband around with me in KL just because I'm here for my kids. You know, I don't, I cannot expect him to be here because of what I want. It's, it doesn't work like that. I have to be totally understanding that. I want him to be there. You got your responsibility. I got my responsibility. And when there's time for us to do it together, we'll do it. You know what I mean? There's no there should not be any forcefulness in the relationship. Uh so yeah, it's it's a process of building and this is what I had to really learn after so many marriages and failures and again I'm not perfect. I've done some mistakes as well myself when it came to the decisions with my children and the divorce and stuff because you see as a human being kita memang we're so weak right and we're all childish mm. and we have to outgrow that we have to learn we have to one thing i i i put in my head is uh learn to be forgiving and learn to forgive yourself um or else you will never be able to move in your mm. life so you know so It's, it's more it's, like yeah. growing as an adult emotionally yeah. to be in a relationship. Yep. It's more like two adult emotionally being in a relationship. Adult doesn't mean our age, what we, yeah. what's the job is. Most of the yeah. time, people are being still in child ways of thinking in a yeah. relationship. We really need it to come to a place of both of them coming as an adult, yeah. living interdependently, not a co codependent relationship or hyper independent, but yeah. an inter. Dependent partnership. Yeah, that is such. And I think I think to, to add on on that is also to see the the children. For yeah. example, like mm-hmm. like in in a in a situation that even they 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 come from a, a different lineage of of of, of dads. Yeah. One mom. Okay. And uh, how they interact, mm-hmm. how they interact is very important because mm-hmm. then uh, they're going to have a new kind of set. Of parents. of parents of mm-hmm. mindset that you know yes. what it's like this yeah. like yeah. multiverse going on there yeah. and and how they're going to understand how their future might be for them right. because of the stability right. that that one can show right. but right. was was it a hard time also mm-hmm. like when when you had one offspring mm-hmm. and then moving to the second and third and you had kids in that relationship mm-hmm. how did, 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 did this this Just parents, especially moms, yeah, face a harder time. Mm-hmm. Like, like the partner in the relationship will say, "Oh, you know what? You're not focusing on on our kids. You're focusing on." Oh yeah, mm-hmm. I had one. <laughs> not going to mention, but I had one that tried to separate my me and my kids. Oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, that was the most disastrous I had. You know, like my chum. Uh, and I think I had one point in my life where I was just going through the. Worst hell ever, and at the end of the day, I had to pick up myself and think about, I'm not going to stay because of this selfishness. Mm. You know, I'm going to leave to save myself before I kill myself, and my kids, I'll go back to them. I have to apologize to my kids for the mistakes I've done, like for being with a sort of individual like that, which I never expected. You know, so that was that journey that I went through, and. Now, um, you know, like when I had to move, I had to really talk to my kids about, because there were certain reasons where I felt that it's okay for me to move because there's no difference between me living here and there. I come back all the time, and if I'm here and they're not with me, I'll be even. Sometimes I feel like the closer we are, the more far I feel. Mm. So when we're away from each other, I feel that the bond is closer, and we've mm. built such a good relationship and. 
Um, I also have learned to let go when my kids need space. Kita kena faham dia tu. Our kids need their space too. Right. Like, they may be small. But look, they come back from school. They come back from this school, that school, play. You know, I can't be calling them. Where are you? How come you never pick up my phone? There is no such thing as you should force your kid to listen to you 24-7 that you want... The mistake I learned in my relationship is we cannot expect them to follow our ways. Same with our kids as well. Meaning we have to have some sort of understanding that they are not like us. How do we come in between? So when my kids call me and they say like, Mommy, I'm sorry I didn't call you for two days. I was so busy with school. I say, it's okay. I, at least I was busy too. You know, benda macam tu. So, kita tak boleh jadi macam mindset culture yang macam, kau kenapa tak angkat phone aku? Huh? No, no, no. I will get that. You know, like, I will get that now. Because culture <laughs> macam ni, culture macam ni, takkan membuatkan something yang healthy untuk anak-anak kita tau. True. It's like, they will feel pressure like, hmm, dah lah macam ni, macam ni, macam ni pun, macam ni, this parent, macam ni, dengan step mother, macam ni. You found all these mm-hmm. things like, I mean, uh, too too much to handle. Too many age. mothers and too many fathers to, Yeah, yeah. Too Unfortunately, drama, they feel you know? that it's normal in a relationship. Yeah. If boyfriends ask like, "Why you didn't hmm. call me? Why you didn't do that?" Yeah. The abuse could be like uh, very normalized. Would they, would, they, would they then also bring the same narrative yes, they will. into? They will have the same relationship pattern. that oh, you know what? The boyfriend yeah. didn't call two days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish. You pick it. They find it love. Times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they find it love. Hey, hello, kita pun pernah juga <laughs> macam tu. I'm not saying kita macam gempa sangat happening, mm. but kita pun pernah go through moments like. Can't get the person we call, 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 call. I mean, mm-hmm. it's normal. And this is because of past experience in our life. Could be from parents, mm. could be from relationship. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot. And growing up, like, you know, I'm 41 this year. And I feel that when I was 38 below, I was such a child still. Mm. It sounds like we're an adult, kan? Mm. Tapi mm. no. I had to go through a roller coaster to find... When will I stop the roller coaster from Malaysia to the Atlantic? You know, I had to go through many roller coasters to understand there are different stages in life to grow up mm-hmm. into. You know, so if I could like fix certain things, I would. But there's no such thing as kita kena menyesal because we were meant to go through it to become a better people to apply it to us and our children and our relationship. Yeah. I, I, I want I want to ask I want to ask Mangala about coaching. Mm-hmm. Uh, mental coaching or, or mm-hmm. brain coaching mm-hmm. uh, in this kind of scenario are Malaysians wanting this or they avoiding this they think they can fix it themselves <laughs> uh, because we we see that uh, the divorce rates are high yeah, yeah, fertility yeah. rates are low uh, and and nobody's fixing this yeah, i mean yeah, the, yeah. The, the, i see i see the agencies mm-hmm. are just uh, so hard they have counselors but they They, they they need to sharpen their tools new new right. skills there right. and and right. and right. to be to be on track right right what we feel like first thing first uh, in our mm-hmm. asian culture in a relationship if you have a uh, fights or arguments you shouldn't be bringing it out to anybody outside it's a family matter you mm. have to sort it by yourself mm. go ask your parents <laughs> right that is the first thing right yeah. breaking that barrier coming out okay sharing it to friends Friends who will be going through the same thing tend to give the advice which is like, uh, you know what, this is normal in a relationship. Mm. You know what, go, let's have some beers. It will be cool. <laughs> <laughs> they go into addiction because they are not really happy with what yeah. they have in their life. And they will go on with that. And when the relationship is like almost breaking, one person cheated. The other person said that, you know what, I'm done with this. The other person filing a divorce. That is the moment they are seeking uh, help outside. That is the moment they are aware like, oh, is there any counseling? Is there any coaching is happening? Mm-hmm. Uh, let me go and try out. I feel like that is too late. Yeah. Yes, we can s- somehow find help, but that is too late. Yeah. Why don't we try to understand the fact that every relationship can grow? Doesn't mean that you have to have a problem to go and find a help. No, yeah, yeah. you can find a vision together as a partner. What is our vision? How can we grow in that? Mm. Are we being only life partner? What if we are business partners? What we are entrepreneurs? How can we grow as our relationship and our business as well? Mm. There are many aspects to it, right? To understand uh, what you the... You forgot ex- the kids. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How can we become a beautiful parent to our kids? Because Not a responsible parent, but a lovely parent. Responsible parent, it's like we have we are playing this role all the time, especially we women, mm. thinking that being responsible is so good in a relationship, mm. but that makes you to be less attractive to your partner mm. because thinking that we are being responsible doing stuffs basically uh, 
activating our maternal instinct instead of activating our sexual instinct to be attractive to the partner to be having a good relationship with him but we are seeing him as a child and we have to like correcting him doing stuff did you pack your bag did you had your lunch why you didn't call me it's more like being very very responsible mm. you're playing a mother kind of role yeah so <laughs> no, a, a lot a lot yeah. of females mm-hmm. tend to to play that that, that yeah. role yeah mother kind of role yeah. which is not really helping you or the partner or maybe well. or maybe the fact that a lot of males are looking for are a mother looking role looking for that mother ma- 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 mother role, yep. mother role yeah. because they know that that yep. if they were to go down the road to find that that super hot chick mm-hmm. they feel they will not get it <laughs> because they they don't belong to that top 20% they feel like you know what oh Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll just settle for this. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah that's cannot, wrong. Yeah. yeah, I mean I feel sorry for uh, male fingers that go through that or friends because that's not the solution and it's more like a rebound. Sometimes when mm-hmm. they get out from a relationship, they don't get something like that from the partner previously like expecting um itu pun lagi satu benda pula sebenarnya. It's like actually they do have their childhood trauma not having their mom, right? So they bring it into their adulthood and like They be with someone. The person couldn't give them what they want, like feed you your breakfast, and then it didn't work out. So instantly they find try to find or is with someone, and they like because I've 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 actually encountered male friends like this. They say, oh, she's good. You know, she prepares breakfast for me in the morning. Everything is ready in the morning. Everything, everything. I'm like, that's not. I feel that that not to say that you don't respect her, but you just want a mother. Like in the end. Like she loves you. Home. <laughs> yeah, like she loves yeah. you, but it's not a relationship. It's nothing later bila sedar sekali boring ni relationship ni sebenarnya. So, so I I, I, mean. I see that very interesting with yeah. men with male patients in the clinic. Yeah. So this situation can be seen because they don't have that fatherly figure at home even though the dad is there all the time. Mm. This mm. happened with the baby boomers. The baby boomers were very capitalist centric. Okay. They want to go out, work, 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 work. Yeah, right. true. Keep the mom at home. Right. But the generation before the baby boomers, or even before World War One, if your dad was a farmer, you farm. Okay. That means you would always hang out with your dad. Okay. You will, you will always hang out with the men in your kampong. Correct. You have to go and do the work that they do. Okay. But in the baby boom generation, moms are kept at home. Dads go in factory, industry, mm. construction, everything. They come back. They just want to sit down, mm. read the paper, wear the saro, yeah. mm. and these guys nowhere to go. Mm. They, they even though the dad is present at home, they don't have that dad. It's like, oh, my dad's cool. Yeah, mm. can boss everybody around. If you learn his trade, <laughs> you don't see that. They don't see that. So, so what they end up having is the mother. Play the vacuum, fill up the gap. Yeah, the filling. Mm. So anything they wanted to go and they ask their dad. In fact, you will realize in this generation, mm. they won't go and ask the dad straight, man to man. They will go and ask their mother to intercede for them. Yeah, right. That true. creates a triangle. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, so, so psychologically, then when they go out into a relationship, they don't want to play that dad figure. They just want like. Find another mother for me. Oh, right, right. Unfortunately, <laughs> okay, see? they are you not the being. Yeah. They're not being that masculine figure that they're exactly, supposed to be. Exactly, yeah. exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Right. And 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 through your journey, I mean, like like, did you go for coaching or did you read like fifty books? Mm, or I love reading. Of mm. course, I would. Um, I mean, I would read all sorts of books. Um, to give me some sort of answer, motivation, a bit of push. But I think what really helped me was in 2018 when I, I was from my third to the fourth before the fourth one happened mm. was I started doing, I started connecting with. She was a follower and she became a good friend. Mm. And she said one day, "Oh, I'm, ba- I'm coming back from Australia to start my business." And she's like, "Would you like to?" Because um, I I think I I was letting out a lot of emotions. Mm. And she's like, "Oh, um, so I'm a official psychotherapist right now." And she's like, let me do a session with you. Mm. So I'm like, I've never been to psychologist, never been to a psychiatrist, never done all this therapy before. Uh, was afraid to go counseling because it was so. It looks, it looks, it looked very cultured or judgmental. Mm. I know where I you're coming a, from. Yeah, I don't want to say the word. <laughs> I don't want to say it too. Yeah, so okay. it, it was like, yeah, yeah. kan duduk cakap tapi sambil kena kritisize kan? Mm. Yeah. So um, it was amazing because she managed to show me what. 
I didn't know what is psychotherapy. What the hell does it make difference mm. between, you know, what is all these different breakdowns? And the session was interesting because I felt like I was playing games with her, but not realizing she was rewiring my brain, right? Um, and then later I met another lady because I think I was blessed, you know, that was probably my crucial year, two years where I was blessed to be connected with people who were experts at brain things, you know, like from a psychotherapist to a brain color psychologist to make me understand what I went through and what I am and what what are people out there? How do I connect and understand how they think? Uh, how do I overcome things? So combine these two and I felt that this has actually saved my life. Even though I had to go through those mistakes, all that, those like scenarios in life, it has actually made me out, outgrow certain things about myself and make me understand a lot of things. You know, um, how to handle it better, how to be even stronger, like by a thousand times, like a million times than before. Um, because every strong person will always crash anyhow. But how do I maintain not collapsing all the time? Mm. So I believe that, you know, it doesn't mean kita pergi for a psychotherapy punya session, okay, one time is enough. No, I have to consistently see her because sometimes it's not even about relationship. It's about work. It's about um, work experience or children or family or exes or whatever. It could be anything. It's, Dimitri, psychotherapist to me or whatever you choose, whatever therapy, is an outlet for you to be able to regulate your emotions. Exactly. And then to learn the technique how to re-regulate it. Like, macam, it's like a cycle. Unlearn right? and relearn. Yeah, unload it and like really say, like, how, do you, how do you fix the problem? It's not so much about fixing, but how do you, what's the solution? Kalau tak, you will just be stuck in that position and there is no way you will be able uh, to solve the problem. It will always repeat, repeat, right. repeat, repeat, same cycle, same cycle. I mean, I can't say that life is perfect because cycles do come back sometimes. Meaning, okay, when it happens, you should be alert about it. And then, how do you block it? So, it's, it's a, to me, that has helped me a lot. If I didn't come across these individuals and had the heart to go to help myself, I think I would still suffer in so much areas and just be, I will not, I'll not be here today, like Honestly. basically, you know. Right. Yeah. Right. Beautifully so, said. Yeah. So, when you do your therapies, what goes on? I mean, like, like just guide us through, just guide the audience yeah. through, like, yeah. what, what do they go through this, this kind yeah. of questions and how they, it's not going to be like, one session and sit down, sleep, no, no, it's not no, like no, 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 definitely not. Definitely Hypnotize not. me. Whatever, <laughs> whatever she said, it's about, first thing was, she was committed to herself. I want to work on myself. Yeah. I want to see the result on myself. Yeah. I want to heal it so that I can have a better generation the coming along. Yeah. Hmm. Or even, for me, I want to live a happy life that I wanted. Hmm. So the first level of commitment has to be there. Being a therapist, being a coach, I can give my 100%, not of what 50-50 here, my 100%, I would expect the same 100% from your side because it is your dream life. Mm. It is the way that you want to live your life, right? So it's more like a journey where it's a timeline journey where they have to really go to their past moments. Yeah. Whatever has happened, really have to see it, have yeah. to face it and then accept yourself, forgive yourself. Yeah. Yes, this has done based on whatever knowledge I had that time, I took this decision. Based on whatever I have learned that time, I made it happen in yeah. my life. It's okay. I am forgiving myself yeah. and now seeing the current self. What am I going through now? Am I repeating the same cycle? Am I being in that same emotional loop again and again? And see the future self. What actually I want to become? What is my real desire for the relationship? Yeah. How I want to be as a partner, as a wife or as a mother, how I actually wanted to be and really embody that person into yourself now. Yeah. That is what she spoke about, yeah. the brain rewiring. It's yeah. more about unlearning whatever we have learned last time yeah. and relearning how we can be based on our life. It's it's more like you are the expert of your life. But I'm it's just, not going to happen in, in a day, right? No, no. no. You are the there will be like several life. sessions. <laughs> exactly. No, I mean, I mean, would you say when you say like several sessions, mm. or this is a process sometimes, uh, I would say like, you know, sometimes when you go for a certain therapy session, right, I would define it as a deep fake. Mm -hmm. Meaning to say like, like oh yeah, yeah, I want to change, I want to change, I want to yeah. change. But then yeah. it's just that, just like the repetitive action of yeah. the words. Because words have a lot of power mm -hmm. and intent mm -hmm. that 
mm-hmm. keep chanting and chanting the energy mm-hmm. yeah. it vibrates mm-hmm. into your into your exactly Mo- most of the time we have the list of don't wants in our life mm. like, i don't want to be this i don't want to bring this to my kids i don't want to have this kind of partner but we don't have the list of wants how i want to be instead rather than focusing our energy on what we don't want how can we talk about what we want yeah, how can sure. we an- analyze that's the that? course i took yeah, yeah right, right? Yeah. Uh, that's the basic that that we needed to know and then how can we be that person totally it's more like total immersion taking action how this person would walk talk speak yeah. behave uh, their perspectives everything right and then move towards the life that you wanted so for that you have to understand what has happened in the past so for in this coaching session we would do guided mindfulness we would mm. do we will give them a module of workbook to be writing on yeah. there would be some that's questions what I did too. right yeah. yeah i had to do all yeah. these things in different yeah. different yeah yeah that's really in every areas of the yeah. life would be touched yeah because whatever we are doing here it definitely will be showing up in our financial life in oh, our yeah. mental health our True. emotional health physic our relationship love life this is the three major thing yeah. physical financial relationship right it will be like showing up up there so we need to learn ourselves and also we know how to have these tools and strategies on handling our financial life every other areas of life yeah and when we sorry um because i I look good. No problem. So but I I realized guys when we switch mm-hmm. our energy changes even. Yeah. And one thing I think I forgot to mention is maybe we also forgot to talk about is mm-hmm. boundaries. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that's when I I mean when I said that I'm okay with what I can don't expect to get before mm-hmm. is because I learn a lot about boundaries. Mm-hmm. And because of that it has helped me uh, to put the boundaries between my own family members as well because in culture ni kan Mm. Um, kalau cakap takut salah tapi in reality banyak tak ajar pasal boundary uh, so because of that lah people can cross the line so easily and so that is putting like, boundaries more like you're being selfish <laughs> yeah like no what I mean is no like certain boundaries like Mm-mm. it can be with anyone it, you know mm. uh, like parents and siblings mm. and then also in relationships meaning like you have to respect my decision or you have to respect the kind of questions right. that you ask like There should be ways of doing it. Meaning, yeah. kalau tak ada boundary, there will be no respect. Mm. So mm. that is what you want to gain respect yep. in some ways, even. Yeah. Because yep. let's say if I um, was never taught about boundaries in my family, meaning I can do whatever I want with my partner and just control his life, mm. which is not healthy at all. So it's important to apply certain boundaries so that we have a healthier relationship. Right. Meaning. Does it mean that two people are married to each other or what what is yours is mine what is mine is yours yes maybe kalau ada that understanding tapi like i said you can't own full ownership of the person because you must have that boundary and respect respect correct yeah yeah kalau tak jadi macam abusive relationship mental abuse physical abuse because of the boundary is crossed no, i i i feel when when when, yeah. we, when we discuss about boundaries kan yeah. the thing that that crossed my mind is now was like when when we look into like like relationships mm. uh in terms of like khusus perkahwinan yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything right honestly i think whether whether it's i, I think i think muslims have the cause yeah. christians have the cause yeah. I, i don't know that about hindus and everything mm. but but i think everybody i think ought to go to something very universal yeah. to learn all of these things because mm. it's not taught yeah. Yeah. i mean i mean kita beranggap anggapan that in relationship or oh, you learn lah all of these things <laughs> you, you yeah. should know your man you should know your your mm-hmm. your, your woman by yeah. by the time you 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 tie the knot mm. yeah. tetapi sometimes we don't even know because they've never <laughs> been into that in that same house kind of Betul, relationship you yeah. do not know how he handles his house you do not know how meticulous your 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 mm. wife could be in the kitchen yeah. you you ex- you think you like, know. i know what i i'm I'm a lucky bujang. I can just put things around the house like yeah. that. But I will get it until today. Like, hey, you know what? The God. Yeah. Oh, um, you know, as we were talking, a lot of things came to my 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 mind, which is kita kena learn to be acceptive of whatever that comes into our life. Meaning, kalau orang tak ada acceptive, mungkin tak boleh menerima. Tak open. Ah, memang susah lah because 
Tapi kalau benda lain dia bawa balik. Itu tak boleh lah. Tiba-tiba bawa minum nombor tiga, nombor empat. Terkejut kan. Macam like, how do I accept the situation? Yelah, maksudnya. Like, Yelah, contoh like you cakap lah. You dah habit daripada dulu kecil saya besar, gelas letak kat situ, tak nak cuci ke. You mm. memang suka letak. Only five hours later, Maybe you ada wash. cara nak letak cermin mata you instead of letak kat atas kereta ni, you letak dekat atas steering lah. Macam, you know, little habits ni kan. Kita kena be acceptive mm. of things kan. Kita tak boleh macam do it as how we want it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like we're living with another human Kalau tak macam, um, I think that's what I learn in, in every relationship that I've been is like, These little things actually play an important role. So when it came to down to like this now, I dah macam, my husband, I dah red doll. <laughs> like, like I like to like, you know, give this ke apa ke macam, he had, maybe has a habit of losing things, but oh. I can't be, accept, uh, but I can't be upset for like a thousand years, right? It's just, I can't, it's not under my control. Thing, right? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. not under my control. So like, for example, if he has these glasses and it's expensive and he lost it, And then after that, he's like, that's why actually I buy 10 ringgit glasses. Oh, okay lah, lantak you lah. <laughs> I'm not, uh, now I know. No point being giving you a birthday gift that's 100 ringgit. Okay lah, your 10 ringgit pun jadi lah. <laughs> so like, yeah. So we just got to accept little flaws um, mm-hmm. and then just laugh about it. Sebab macam kalau there's no laughter, there's no fun. Mm-hmm. Kalau tak forever serious, yeah, moment-moment kita semua memang ada titik bersedak. Eh, if the person didn't mm-hmm. like, janganlah serious sangat, then we won't wake up, right? Mm-hmm. So, we need to revive that relationship all the time. You know, we need to find little things even though it's not uh, worth of a thousand ringgit. Mm-hmm. Tapi those little things sebenarnya yang boleh mengukuhkan that hubungan true. sama isteri. Kan? Very, very true. Because those yeah. are the, the, the small knick-knacks. Yeah. Very important. Like for yeah. me, I, I'm very um, love language person jugalah. So, I like to leave notes, buka amari yang ada. Oh. Tak kat pintu lah. Oh. So because, but then sometimes I forget too. But that's very important, yeah. you know. Because yeah. because sometimes when relationships go uh, long, yeah. they feel that all of this kind of dating elements, yeah. uh, it's like neglected. No, yeah. like, it's okay lah. It's okay. It's no, always, it's yeah. okay. But actually it's not okay. Yeah. It's not okay. It's not like to buy flowers. It's not mm. okay uh, not to buy gifts. Mm. It's like to be remembered. Yeah, that, but no. That, that, it's that, just, that yeah. Because humans are fragile. They want sometimes to be revived. Kan, dia nak macam... Nostalgic sikit. Ha, nostalgic. <laughs> Walaupun dah umur 60 tahun, kan. Like, you know, my my in-laws are wonderful. Like, they are my inspiration. Until today, they still hold hands. It's like, when you mm. look at others, you feel like, wow, this is amazing that mm. they can still maintain this kind of thing, kan. Um, so, I think it's important that kita kena memang be a little bit thoughtful lah in our partner's life. Like, you can't expect them to be like, oh, if I write notes around the whole house, sampai ke dalam steering pun kat bawah hmm. kaki, hmm. clutch pun letak note. Lampak lah. <laughs> you can't oh, expect the God. person to do the same. So my husband has his love language. I have my love language. So macam, it's cute actually. You know, so masing-masing ada dia punya, dia punya own ways of, ways of expressing kan. So kita kena belajar untuk jadi adapt to dia dan dia kena belajar adapt to me. So kalau, that's when you find the the good ground together, the center. Um, balance is not about you must be me, I must be like you, you must follow me, I must follow you. Tak, it doesn't yeah. work that way. This mm. is what I learned. It's about balance lah. Dia kena macam ni, macam ni sikit. Uh, dia macam, macam, macam ni. Like one one. <laughs> <laughs> dia tak <laughs> boleh <laughs> macam straight. Ah, macam tu tak boleh. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. Very beautiful. Okay. Yeah. So before, before we wrap up, uh, mm. just a couple of things to ask Mangala first. Uh, yeah. Any message? You think Mental health in relationship very important. Yeah, mm. I, I, I would say um, when we speak, when we even mention the word mental health, people go say like, no, no, I'm good. My mental I'm is mental. good. Uh, <laughs> I'm not mental. No, no, no. Brain health. Let's change that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Yeah, let's let's be just open about it. Like, like, like it's more like uh, we can be. We can have any things in our. We we call it trauma. We call it mm. like uh, childhood trauma, emotional uh, pain inflicted, whatever it is, right? Let's come to a place where we can still work on it. We can still uh, create uh, the best out of it. We can still uh, create beautiful experiences with our partner. Mm. It's it's never too late when you see it like now you are feeling like, why don't I can, you know, um, be like it's like two days along the line, we didn't spoke to each other and you find it like normal. I don't find it normal. It's more like yeah. you're living together and you're not mm. speaking or not facing each other's yeah. face. It's not normal. There is something you need to express yeah. and try to understand. And 
go for it go for the coaching go for the counseling whatever you find or at least right? speak to someone speak yeah. to someone which is which will be helpful not to the same circle who is going through the same thing and then the advice i don't find it helpful yeah. saying things like a temporary addictions people go into gaming people go into uh, scrolling stalking yeah. that is the more you do that the more you are moving away from yourself your mm. true desire mm. from your partner whatever we your need to vision be present. is Yeah. yeah and and how 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 do people get in touch with you oh you you can find me in instagram mangla inspires and there'll be a link uh, to book your first assessment and uh, probably we can i will share my whatsapp number you can connect with me and let's go for one to one assessment that is what we would generally do we go for one to one assessment we speak and we see what's happening and how they want to be what is the gap is there to be you know to be guided through and we will be doing that guiding part it's right. again i would say that you are the expert of your life yeah. you are just being there to show you the blind spots which is like you fail to see and yeah. then you can just go within and have a beautiful life yeah. your partner wait natasha what would you like say the experience well, you want people to ask come and see me for therapy <laughs> <laughs> that would be great as well yeah, I, i think I, I, i think you should share to um, people about about yeah, about actually, actually maybe yeah. we're going to release yeah. it out i just want to tell yeah. you that so when i knew in everything that you do in your life relationship um because it's nice every time i listen to you speak it always gives me oh my god i have to mention something mm-hmm. so dimension um relationship kita like i agree that i cannot even for me have arguments more than a few hours or even a day as so much like, oh, i'm going to hang myself you know it's mm. not healthy at all it's about uh, uh fixing and connecting right away actually in, in in fact it affects your environment your work circle how can you go to work with that that energy that energy kan right. so it's important to fix it so you can just brush it away and then be okay again and another thing is like the activities that you do in your life like for me when i okay one of the things that healed me was in 2019 is Uh, I had a a friend who was treating me in 2018 a fully blind chiropractor right he's so gifted and he said that one day he invited me he's like uh after he treated my issues and in 2009 we connected at uh, 19 he we connected he said Tasha you pandai naik kuda kan you dah lama tak naik kuda kan jomlah abang ada kuda you bayangkan a blind man inviting me to the things that is actually part of me which I never got when I tried to ask the ones in my relationship hey let's do stuff that i like which i feel that can help bond so when i did that horses were healing to me tau kuda ni amazing yeah. because they have even scientifically uh, oh. it's proven that their haba badan or their body heat is healing that you can't even you can't even tell or come up with like a paperwork like how does it help human beings kan so doing activities like horse riding and then i started archery again and then i did horseback archery was like wow i didn't see that coming Like, how did I shift from there to there, kan? And then becoming a instructor. We need to find outlets, like archery. Like, if if uh, I mean, ever in your lang, if you're ever in Langkawi, like uh, I'm there to teach archery, and my husband is also a surfer, so we have a surf school. Um, these what these elements are amazing. Uh, water, horse, and archery. And uh, angkat the coincidentally in Islam. These are the not to say uh, uh, recommend uh, not to say forceful activity, but it's recommended in human punya the goodness for human. So it's funny that I actually did all this by coincidence. You know, I discovered how I became more grounded. Uh, water element, horse element, and archery. And ini adalah sukan yang betul boleh membantu mental health kita hmm. because the outlet untuk connect dengan macam in the water you like connecting to the ocean, understanding the waves, and then Uh, apa tu absorbing a high magnesium into your body right and like you said my folate was beyond normal kan orang normal sembilan I'm 45 macam mana tu <laughs> like, because I absorb all the the nature into me uh, and archery is like an outlet like you know macam nak lepas geram tembak orang tembak <laughs> <laughs> macam, exactly. like, I mean it's it's a good exercise right, right, um, right. to actually uh, help your mental health and even good for children for focus so when I imagine when I was in lockdown I was shooting arrows in a condominium hmm. how's that <laughs> bangun tidur buka pintu ha tu dia target whatsapp ada tak ada gambar whatsapp so yeah i mean kita memang kena cari outlet lah yang kita boleh buat for ourselves and our partners our families um to to orang kata keep us grounded aligned, aligned. 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 Yeah. Uh, kena buat macam i don't like going to the gym or jogging i rasa macam lambatnya mm. process tu so i found something that i connect to so this too semua plays an important role for a person lah juga Great. so yeah. inspiring Great. really inspiring yeah. <laughs> and and and, and, and message for people who are somewhat 
who been in your shoes in my and shoes. Jenny's are going through that. Mm, to be honest, there are so many out there. In fact, when I was going through maybe my third, fourth cycle before, I had a follower, followers who told me that they had eight, ten marriages. So mm. I thought I was the only crazy one. Like people are calling me crazy for going through stuff like that. Tapi not knowing that sebenarnya banyak orang go through this, but they don't talk about it or they're not mm. known. So for any of those yang memang tengah lalu ibunya macam tu, to me, like for me, I never give up. I believe in um in love, of course. I believe that uh they, we were created for each other. Uh, I believe that two pairs are there to become backbones. So macam tak boleh nak give up lah, tak boleh nak cakap you're not perfect, you are bad or whatever. It's all about sebenarnya connecting to your own body and your soul in order to achieve something that you deserve. Semua orang deserve some sort of happiness or ending, good ending. So, kalau you dah cuba, uh, it worked, Alhamdulillah. I mean, uh, thank thank God to that. If it didn't work, don't don't make it a big problem. Because it's just your, basically your takdir lah kan. Whatever that's meant for you, it's meant for you. Like, where for me lah kan, like, uh, there is a saying, wherever the arrow land, that's where God wants it to be. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't to finish it. <laughs> okay, yeah. so thank you again uh, to both of you. Thank you so uh, much for being so for being I'm in here. this uh, <laughs> event on on our podcast show. But I think one big take home message I think for for a lot of people I think there are a lot of us out there, uh, physicians, doctors, coaches, yeah. people yang pernah harungi mm. this uh, journey that you can seek help from. Yes. And jangan selalu fikirkan that macam do- datang jumpa doktor, kita hanya buat blood test and everything, hanya nak jumpa, nak tengok stress and things. Kadang-kadang, stress ni semua jauh melangkaui daripada just the physical saja. Betul. Bila mental is affected, dia akan merayap hmm. masuk ke dalam the physical and then we can see. So, yeah. kadang-kadang, kalau lah you bersama dengan uh, doktor or uh, orang-orang perubatan tu, or psychologists or, or coaches, jangan hold up. Mm-hmm. Kalau you terpaksa express, you have to express yeah. your emotion so that they can understand that this thing triggers what benda benda ni. Have trust. And, yeah, and yeah. have trust yeah. because we 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 are trained to do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, sekian saja episod kali ini. Semoga episod ni uh, membawa banyak manfaat kepada yeah. semua yang telah menonton. Jangan lupa like, follow, share, subscribe, mm-hmm. lusung uh, batu medik show sehingga kita bertemu di episod seterusnya. Kita lesung. Kau-kau. Bye. See you in another episode. Thank you, sir. <laughs>